Frank Reich is the new head coach of the Carolina Panthers. There's conflicting reports, including a Sean Payton report coming out of Denver and their vacant head coach position. And of course, we've got to make our picks and preview the championship games Sunday, AFC and NFC championships. Coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson, as always, at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of PNW is presented by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. Of course, on this Friday show before Championship Sunday, we're going to make our picks. We're going to get into these AFC and NFC Championship games, Bengals, Chiefs, 49ers, Eagles. But there's some big news around the NFL. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, does it feel like it's taking longer for these head coach hires to happen in this yeah. cycle than ever before? The five open jobs, one finally now has been closed. And that is Frank Reich, who was one of the first quarterbacks, the first through the first touchdown pass in, in franchise history for the Panthers as a quarterback, is now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Matt, what, what's your thoughts on Frank Reich as a head coach here and how quickly he was snatched up, getting, you know, basically being the first hire in this cycle after getting fired during the season by his old team? Yeah, I, I'm old enough to remember when the Panthers and Jags were expansion teams. And that's pretty funny that Reich was their first quarterback, you know, in pretty cool situation. Um, I think this is a very solid hire. And I, I think Reich has proven, I often say maybe there's 20, 25 men in the world that know how to win in the NFL. I think he's one of them. You know, I mean, maybe there's even less, I mean, to be very honest. And um, some, you know, I think that he is a very solid hire, strong offensive background. You know, I would think that this is preparing for a new quarterback, probably a rookie, but who knows? Um so I think it's a leadoff double. You know, I mean, I, I thought he got way too much heat for what happened in Indianapolis this year, too. And this is probably a better situation for him. That's the big question, because and and really recently, I can't really even think of any quarterback or any head coaches recently that were. Fired and hired, hired, and hired <laughs> yeah. right away. Like it right. doesn't happen anymore. You you wait a while. You go back. You're a coordinator. You go to college. Come back. And then you get another shot eventually. But to be fired, hired that quickly kind of doesn't happen in this day and age in the NFL. So that was a little surprising, and maybe shows you that around the league and and who knows maybe it's just an interview process thing that maybe he's more highly thought of than a guy a coach that should have been axed by the Colts. Yeah, that, that's my thoughts as well because he was on many lists. You know, I mean. It, it, I always bring things back to the Steelers. You'll bring things back to the Niners. Like, as soon as he got hired, I'm, uh, should, should the Steelers go hire him as their offense coordinator? I'm like, I right. bet he can do better. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I don't think he's just grabbing a coordinator job because he knows that he is one of those 20 guys or whatever that is proven winner in this league. And Panthers could use that. I kind of feel bad for Steve Wilkes because he did nothing wrong. You know, I mean, he, he I, but I, I guess he boosted his stock big picture, though. The, the Colts should go hire Steve Wilkes probably if they're looking at the interim <laughs> right. Jeff Saturday, which apparently is the situation there with the Colts. And um, according to reports, Jim Ursay still, it's like basically Jeff Saturday is the leader in the clubhouse and, and I think it's has to come with somebody to talk Ursay into another candidate over Jeff Saturday. That's the vibe that, that the reports are giving us here, which, which seems odd. And the Colts are interviewing everybody too. Like yeah. this is the widest net I can remember. So an interesting um, coaching search happening with the Indianapolis Colts real quick with Frank Reich though. Um, I, you, you nailed it with quarterback. He's a, you know, he's a former quarterback, a quarterback's mm -hmm. coach, um, offensive guy clearly. And that's the thing they have to figure out with the Panthers is the quarterback situation. I'm pretty sure Carson Wentz wasn't part of that plan for Frank Reich as he was interviewed, but he had to have a really good quarterback plan, right? Or else you don't get that job. 
I would assume so. I mean, it, I don't know what it is. Is it, you know, put your hat in the ring to get Lamar? Is it move up to the top five? Is it, you know, hang where you're at? I think they pick eight and hope that Levis falls or something along those lines. I doubt you go in there saying, well, oh, we'll sign Jimmy and be fine, or, you know, or I'm going to develop Corral or, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. And maybe Corral was part of it. Uh, I, I, you know, Everyone forgets sure. about him. I'm sure the Colts had a grade on Corral as, as mm -hmm. a draft prospect, and, and and he watched a lot of tape on Corral, so maybe he had some thoughts there. And and maybe it was just that this is the best quarterback coach we can find as a head coach because we we know we're going to go young and try to develop our next quarterback. So maybe that's why Frank Reich made the most sense. Maybe this is a, Maybe this is a key that they're going young at quarterback. Well, we got two weeks before the Super Bowl starting next week. And one thing, I didn't tell you this, but – I put together a tiny little spreadsheet. Doesn't even have to be a spreadsheet. <laughs> Williamson's predictions of what who everyone's starting quarterbacks are going to be next year. Yes, I yeah. love it. Oh, that's going to be a fantastic. I thought that'd be a fun show. show. That's right yeah. up your alley. Exactly. And Carolina, I have as a draft pick. I mean, I, I so we'll see. I mean, that's just my hunch. That was before this hire. I did this two days ago. So putting some some stuff together for next week for you there, BP. I like that. No, that's a great episode for that lull. And it would always, it's frustrating as a fan and even almost more frustrating as a, you know, as a broadcaster and a, and a content creator that extra week before the Super Bowl because mm -hmm. you just get beaten over the head by all the stories for the Super Bowl. And, <laughs> and it's like, gosh, just get the game here because I want to talk about it that extra week. But we get senior bowl stuff as well, which yeah, we'll dive into that next week. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that episode too. And, and that's obviously, it's always so big every offseason with the, with the quarterback carousel around the NFL. So I'm looking forward to that. And, and we'll absolutely, dive into that for an episode here leading up between the championship Sunday and the Super Bowl real quick I get the impression I'm I have feeling you have the same hunch that the Miko Ryans will probably end up being one of those spots it fills you, you mentioned how slow it's moving I think somebody from the Eagles will probably get hired so I, I do think there's some head coaches coaching this weekend yeah and it's funny because there's a lot of leaks coming out of Denver with their coaching search and According to Mike Cleese, who covers the team closely, and Ben Albright actually beat him by, I think, about 24 hours. Albright's always really plugged in there with what's going on with the Broncos. I believe he's on the radio at KOA in Denver, um, but is plugged in with somebody in the league. I don't know. He's like the the he's like the he's Twitter version of, of Adam Schefter or something, where he's got okay. some connection somewhere, and he always has really good information, and he usually gets it out before other you know, big name reporters get some stories. And apparently uh, D'Amico Ryans is the leader in the clubhouse with multiple reports now and, and the favorite candidate for the Denver Broncos. Okay. And then there was up. a report that Shane Steichen from the Eagles offensive coordinator didn't have a great interview with the Broncos. And then there was another report that Sean Payton, did not have an, a great interview with the Broncos or that, and I'm not sure it wasn't really clear which side, but here was the report. And, and I, I bring this up because Sean Payton himself on Twitter actually responded to it. So this was the report. <laughs> I love um, that Payton's unemployed and just says whatever he wants. Yeah, so he, yeah, he, he can go on Twitter and, and set the record straight. I, I love right. it. I don't want that job. Uh, Payton, this, the, the report was this. Uh, there was an issue with Peyton's interview with the Broncos. Peyton likes the idea of coaching Russell Wilson and having that defense, but fears a potential power struggle with a member of the ownership group, a source says. Oh. Now, Sean Peyton quote tweeted that himself and said, zero truth to this. We had a great visit and Broncos ownership was fantastic. So there you go. Right. Um and, and Sean Peyton's been connected with the, the Arizona Cardinals job. I don't know why the, I don't, the, Part of why this is weird, how it's slow it's going, I would have thought Sean Payton would have been the first guy, first big domino, the the obvious number one choice for a lot of teams if they can make that happen. And the fact that he hasn't been hired yet makes me feel like he either the Saints want too much compensation, teams like the Colts and the, the, the Cardinals don't want to give up their top five draft picks in this scenario, yeah. um, that, you know, maybe... Peyton doesn't like the jobs that much and might wait to the next cycle. That's what I was leaning towards. Right. I, I don't know if you caught this, but former friend or you know, friend of the show, Mike Sando put together a list of, you know, ranked the, the open head coaching jobs. And when you read it like that, it's like, none of these are that great. I mean, Mike's thought with all his criteria and talking to people in the league, he's had Houston as the best job. I, yeah, I did and, read that. And, and, yeah. I, and I thinking like, wow. about it from that way, where it's a blank slate, you have, yeah. uh, you have, Free agent dollars, you have a ton of draft picks, low expectations, you get to implement your thing. I would say, though, for Sean, 
they fired a guy for after one year, two years in a row, and they have no good players. And you're <laughs> not, right. And and they already have a GM that did that stuff. Right. And so I'm not fighting Mike. I mean, that, right. I'm just saying these jobs aren't that attractive. That still might be better than Herod and Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson. <laughs> I thought the jobs with no GM and no head coach were the best ones because then he could mm-hmm. really put his thing into place and bring in. I actually those- think Carolina is the best job. You think that Frank has the best job? Yeah, that division's okay. bad, and they have some pieces. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens with the rest of the coaching cycle. More news, I'm sure, to come after Championship Sunday. These teams got to get hired, and there's more time for those coaches that either lose to interview and follow up on those interviews and and more time for the coaches that are in the Super Bowl that extra week to do their interviews as well. So I have a feeling over the course of uh, that lull with the extra week before the Super Bowl, we'll have a lot of these coaching vacancies all sewn up as well. And, of course, covered for you every day right here on Peacock and Williamson. Next. Bengals, Chiefs, 49ers, Eagles, AFC, NFC, championship game preview, and picks. You know, as a small business owner or hiring manager, success this year all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. And it starts at the top and all the way down. And it's not unlike a NFL organization. You got to hire the right head coach, right? So that way that hood head coach fires hires the right coaching staff underneath him and develops all the talent underneath them. And you put the best product out there and it's as true in the NFL as it is for your small business. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you hire and interview the most qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So go to LinkedIn jobs, help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Find your uh, post your job for free and find your ideal candidate at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day. Make sure you're checking out everything else the network has to offer. Your team is covered right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, no matter the sport. Of course, Locked On NFL Podcast and Peacock and Williamson still on the Locked On NFL channel, but eh, some news is coming up, I think, next week on on that front as well. We might need everybody out there. Um all the, the the practice dummies is they're called right is that is that what you you called them back yeah yeah the tackling dummies <laughs> the tackling practice, dummies practice squad or the tackling yeah, dummies go. depending what kind i of got to mix I, I put it together there um or we're gonna need some <laughs> big subscribing action i think coming next week some more news on that but make sure you're checking out locked on nfl and if i'll keep predictions and game to game episodes as well on the locked on nfl channel and still right now you can find peacock and williamson on the Locked On NFL YouTube channel as well. All of these shows available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, BP, I heard your little spiel there, and I think everyone needs to check out Locked On Niners too. I'm yeah. hijacking this thing. I'm going to be the host now. I want to talk Ooh. nine. I want to talk Niners Eagles with you right now, and as if this is Locked On 49ers. Like, what's your fears? Well, how are you attacking the opponent? We have the unique. It, it, uh, example here of one of the final four teams hosts is on board, much like we did with the Bengals yesterday. What scares you most? How are you attacking? Dig in deep for me, brother. Yeah, yeah, this is a big one. And uh, thought a lot about this game and, and thought a lot about this football team, obviously. And, and shout sure. out to everybody who who also listens to Locked On 49ers, who, who uh, tunes in to Peacock and Williamson as well. The numbers have been crazy, by the way, throughout the playoffs That's awesome, on, yeah. on all of our podcasts. It's been fantastic. So shout out to all the listeners. The fears, the biggest fears, let's start there for the 49ers. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the path to the Eagles winning this football game. Both these teams have, th- these are the two best teams in the NFC. I, I think it was clear mm-hmm. at, at the end of the season that this was sort of a, a collision course with these two teams. The best rosters, top to bottom. They're they're both really good up front. They both have tons of playmakers. They can both uh, have tons of playmakers really on offense and the defensive side yeah. of the ball. There's so but, many pro bowlers. I, I think these are the two best rosters in the league where the AFC has the two best quarterbacks in the league. Right, exactly. So th- those yeah. are the storylines here. It's like, okay, best quarterbacks in the NFL, maybe Mahomes, Burrow. I mean, that is yeah, that is awesome. a prime time matchup right there. You love that. And with the 49ers, just the best rosters, and then y- the quarterbacks are are very different. But 
I think that's still one of the biggest stories with this game, and it, it usually is when you get to this point, is the quarterbacks. And, and how much of an advantage do the Eagles have at quarterback versus what the 49ers have at quarterback? And on paper, and if you listen to national shows, you would think that um, that the the 49ers are running a guy out there who can't throw the ball at all and has no <laughs> yeah, shot, yeah, 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 you know, right. that kind of a thing. Like such an underdog story, but the, yeah. the statistics don't really tell that story. And when you look at the last seven games or so, uh, actually, Brock Purdy's numbers look better than than Jalen Hurts' numbers. Hurts. And really, it's that's what's been so remarkable about this for Brock Purdy is his numbers literally since he walked on the field when Jimmy G got hurt against the, the Miami Dolphins in week 14. Brock Purdy has been literally one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL, statistically. He's, mm-hmm. he's top three in just about every category. I know. Top crazy. one in a lot of categories, including quarterback rating and you know touchdown to interception ratio, those kind of things. So it's phenomenal. So that gap might not be as big. And look, I think I'm not going to fight anybody. He's like, you know, Jalen Hurts is, is a better quarterback and they have a, a little bit of an advantage there. Mm-hmm. And I think where the advantage lies, and this is the scariest thing for the 49ers defense, is his running ability. And the 49ers have struggled sometimes versus really athletic quarterbacks. Because okay. the biggest thing it does is it changes the way you play defense so you can't be as aggressive up front. And your rush lanes have to be more contained yeah, than just sense. going and getting the quarterback. And the 49ers have absolutely destroyed immobile pocket quarterbacks. Yeah, I can see and that. Teeing off, yeah. Right. So you can just tee off on it. You can't run on the team. You become one-dimensional, and now you're just a sitting duck back there in the pocket. And so um, with Jalen Hurts, it's it's the, okay, we stopped him on first and second down. Now it's third and eight, and then he's, and we have everybody covered, but he scrambles for a first down. Just back yeah, breaking, yeah. keeping those drives alive. Those are the, the types of plays I think that could beat the 49ers and, and why the, the Eagles would have an advantage here with Jalen Hurts is just – how different you have to play against a quarterback like that and obviously all the weapons he has on offense. So they can run the ball, and even if they can't run the ball, now you have A.J. Brown and you have Devontae Smith and you have Dallas Goddard, and then you have the the legs if those guys are all still covered. So there's just a lot you have to do as a defense oh, against the Philadelphia. so hard to play against. Right. So hard it makes to play against. Along those lines, just to throw my two cents in here too, I think these are the two, probably the two best defensive fronts in the league as well. But I think the Eagles O line is more capable man versus man of handling the Niners front than vice versa. And if I was looking at this from an Eagles perspective, it's hard to find any weakness on either one of these teams. They're the two best rosters in the league. But Brown and Smith versus your corners, I'm gonna take some shots down the sidelines. Yes. And and that and here's what's funny is teams have been able to hit some, whether it's um, you know, trying to pick on Diamador Lenore, you know, he was a fifth mm-hmm. round pick last year. And actually the teams have tried that in the playoffs and he's got an interception in each one of the playoff games. He's, played so well, he's, huh? yeah. he's come up and played big. Um, but when, when you look at what uh, teams have done with the 49ers is they've been able to hit a big player too in almost every game, but the 49ers are so good. They've overcome those. And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. you hit one fine. You know, last week it was like, okay, CD lamb can go for 10 catches and 117 yards. What else you got? Unless you're doing other stuff too, it still mm-hmm. doesn't matter. It's not enough. And they've had some communication issues and occasionally a, a coverage bust and, and a team hits a big one. So so that would be a, a big part of it is, is and that kind of goes hand in hand with Jalen Hurts, um, you know, elongating a play, getting out of the pot yeah, yeah. and, and then making that second reaction play and you can't cover that long and then you hit a, a deep shot. So deep shots will be a part of this if the Philadelphia Eagles win this game, I would imagine. I think you're 100% right. And on and, the... Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, there's. You mentioned the 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 matchup up front, and I agree with everything you said. But the Eagles are very strange. It's almost a statistical anomaly because 70 sacks this year, so far ahead of everybody. Yeah. Um, and you have to go back. I don't even remember what the stat was. You got to go back 20 years or something to find a team that had that many sacks. And, but their pressure rate is actually below the 49ers pressure. Rate. Oh, really? It's actually below, uh, I think there's maybe eighth in the league in pressure rate, even though they had 70 sacks. So the they ratio of a sick number of right, the ratio of pressures, sacks, pressures yeah. versus getting home. And we, we talk a lot how the sacks aren't always the best barometer. Mm-hmm. So I think what's happening here a lot with the Eagles and you look at their record and I think it bears this out. I think the Eagles have been such good front runners that they get especially early, early in the year. Yeah, so they, they were been, killing people by the halftime. Yeah, and, and and they've had these. I think there was three games on their schedule where they had just an obscene number of sacks in those three mm-hmm. games. Yeah, and yeah. you look at the rest of the games, and it's kind of normal, normalized. You know, it's good, but not like whoa, that crazy amount of sacks. Um, 
It was like week six or seven when the Steelers played them, and I broke them down to no end as if I was in the Steelers' front office. (laughs) And their first half stats were just off the charts remarkable. Crazy. Where the second half didn't even matter. You know, and that's a lot of their season. We're kind of picking nits here too, and it's not downplaying how good they are because their front is really good. But I think uh, one of the things that happens with this team, and I think we see it with the 49ers, and it's not uncommon in the NFL, is I think the Eagles have been really good front runners because they've been able to get early leads. And now with Bradbury and Slay on the outside, they're covering up your guys, and I think that's why they're converting a lot of those sacks later in games is they're getting home a lot, making those teams Mm one-dimensional, and then they're able to run the ball with the lead and, and go win a football game. So one of the biggest aspects in this game to me is who scores first and who's able to play bully ball because the 49ers run defense is better than the Eagles run defense. Even after some fixes that the Eagles have had with their run defense, if the 49ers can get a lead and play their brand and run the football, um, I think that's the path to victory for the 49ers because I think the Eagles offense can be had and there's tons of playmakers and and putting those linebackers in conflict if they try to – you know, if they try to bring everybody up and it's like, we have to stop the run against the 49ers. The Niners kill people and Kyle Shanahan's so good at beating the linebackers behind the linebackers too. And yeah. if Brock Purdy can facilitate that. And of course, you know, always penalties and, and turnovers, turnovers and things and where yeah, you know, yeah. if they play both, both teams play it clean or both teams have the same amount of turnovers and penalties. What's going to make the difference. Uh, I think those are the, the, the big, aspects that's going to win or lose these these games for these two teams so like if you just look at the stats you'll look at the the eagles defense and be like they're not so great against the run you know they allow a pretty big chunk per rush but that's how they're designed they're a fangio defense that's why they have jordan davis and hargrave they want those guys to eat up a gap and a half and they don't want to dedicate an extra guy to the box and they take the assumption if you can't beat us over the top you're not going to keep up with our offense and it's worked unbelievably well But I wonder in this matchup, because I want Purdy throwing to the outside. I want Purdy to making difficult arm strength throws. And we know how good Debo, Kittle, McCaffrey, all those crossing routes. I might want to flood between the numbers more and play a little bit more unorthodox than I usually do as the Eagles. Because you know it's going to be a close game. You're not going to be winning by 20 at halftime and just teeing off. I want a lot of bodies in the middle of the field. Right. And, and if you're looking for big plays too, that, that could be, that could go the other way with the 49ers talked about maybe a big play over the top on the outside mm-hmm. for the Philadelphia Eagles for the 49ers it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be the catch and run. Does Debo have that 60 yard catch and run on a right. slant or on a screen or Christian McCaffrey, or can they break off some big runs, get to the outside with the wide zone uh, and, and maybe hit some overs, hit some, uh, some dig routes that they love to throw. Those, those are the big ones, the catch and run stuff. If the 49ers are going to hit those big plays that would be massive for that team obviously i know we're going to pick games we always do i don't even want to pick either one of these i think they're the best four teams out there they're phenomenal matchups i don't care who ends up in the super bowl it's going to be a great game i know you have skin in the game that's obviously different but i think they're both like one point games i mean i think the lines have been right around there all week that's exactly how they should be i'll be shocked if either one of these games is a double digit win well, we have to make our picks. We'll make yep, our picks yep. for this one next. And of course, AFC Championship game as well. But it's a perfect segue to talk about our friends and the new sports book betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network that is FanDuel. And the 49ers are two and a half point underdogs at the Philadelphia Eagles. And the 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 Bengals Chiefs line has just moved all around like crazy all week long. And that is settled on one and a half now. The Kansas City Chiefs are favored mm. at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. You can find all of those lines at FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. I love the FanDuel website interface. It could not be easier. And new customers join today. Get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets. Of course, point spreads. Money line, player props. There is even a parlay builder. I mean, it is so much fun. Super tons of Super Bowl props. There's player props, NFL draft props, which is one of the most fun things I have all season betting on sports is those draft props. And you can find all of it in, a, in an awesome interface. Could not be simpler and easier at FanDuel. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet and get $150 in free bets. Win or lose on that $5 bet, by the way, you still get the $150 free uh, dollars in bets at fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more 
with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL and now the Locked On Podcast Network. Okay, we got to make a pick. I'm going to make my yep. pick first here. And I like taking the points in this game because um, I know it's a hostile environment, but man, Brock Purdy has passed every single test and I just have no reason to doubt him anymore. I like that 49ers defense. I'm going to take the points. I think this one's going to be close. I'm going to go 49ers 24 Eagles 23, Niners by one. <laughs> That's hilarious because I have Eagles 24, Niners 23. Wow. <laughs> and I'm just know. saying, just because of home team, uh, I'll be very honest. If this yeah. was in San Fran, <laughs> I'd have a 24, 23 Niners. Um, I think it's going to be a one point game. I think the next game is going to be a one point game. I mean, they're going to be super competitive. Can't wait to just be a fan this weekend. I'll also analyze things, but I'm taking the home team here. And that's really my only deciding factor. So looking at the AFC championship, Matt, are you surprised that the the Bengals have been underdogs? If you take away the first two weeks, of the NFL season, the that's Bengals all about been my homes. Don't you think the he's Bengals been the best practicing in full? Uh, here's what's strange to me is the optics of Mahomes practicing on a, on a, you know, he doesn't have a boot. He's like right around and, and they've got it filmed up and he's working out in public so people can take pictures. I find that very strange. I think that's fishy. It's fishy as heck, right? <laughs> yes. What's the benefit of the of the the benefit is they don't prepare for Henny and Henny's actually going to play. And I don't think it's that either. Oh, that's not going to happen. You know, so what there would be no benefit even as fishy as it looks. But one thing is clear. I think this the. The Bengals have already beaten Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, right? Like Three we've times already row, seen yeah. that happen. Yeah. And we saw what the Bengals just did to the, the Buffalo Bills. And I, I didn't understand why the Bills were so favored in that game. I really yeah. like them, you know, without anything. But a not 100% Patrick Mahomes, that's the reason the Chiefs are the Chiefs. That's the reason the Chiefs would be favored is because you have Patrick Mahomes. If he's not going to be 100%, am I crazy for, for wanting to take the Bengals all day long, especially if you're going to get a couple points? I am going to pick the Bengals and probably a little stiffer than just the one point that I implied. I think it's like 24, 21. Uh, I don't think the hostile environment bothers them. I'm sure Mahomes will be in tip top shape much more than most people after a bad injury for a week. I'm sure he'll get a shot. It'll be taped to no end. You know, they'll plan accordingly, but some keys to me, and we talked a lot about this yesterday, check out yesterday's podcast. You know, we're talking Bengals heavily, but we talked about this game a lot the golden rule against Mahomes never blitz him, you know, never let him outside the pocket. Well, maybe I want to do both. I mean, if he's hobbling a little bit or all the outside zone, they run, can he even get out there to hand the ball? Like he couldn't when the injury happened, I'm sure that'll be better with a week's of healing. And of course, all the improv stuff, of course. Uh, to be honest with you, I think he might be in worse shape than last week. Cause that adrenaline won't be there, mm -hmm. you know, to, to play through. And you want to hit him, I think, early. You want him to feel that pressure. Oh, yeah. You want to want to make him make some mistakes. You want him to, you know, and I don't want to say you want to hurt him or knock him out of the game, but no, I don't that could be part of it. Twisting his well. ankle to the end bottom of piles and stuff. But, right. But. Like <laughs> this was week, if this was week seven, he wouldn't be playing right now. He would have not practiced and he would not be on the field. I tend to agree. You know what I mean? So, you know, make him feel that pressure and, and it, it, that it, you you've got to pressure Patrick Mahomes in this game. So I, mm -hmm. I think that changes. And if he's proven he's going to beat you and he's actually hundred percent, then you make those adjustments very quickly. But um, that, and no Tyreek, you know I mean? Like right. if I am going to come after him and be aggressive and hit him high, low, wherever you used to be like, but Tyreek might have one eighty and three touchdowns. Well, yeah. And so are know. the Bengals going to, are the Bengals going to be like, Oh man, we're going to lose because he's throwing screens to Jarek McKinnon. You know, is that right. gonna really beat the Bengals with what we've seen with this team, what they can scheme up on defense, what Joe Burrow can do with his weapons on offense? Because even if Mahomes was 100 percent, I would lean toward taking the points and taking the Cincinnati Bengals. So uh, I don't know if this counts as a cup of mud, but I mean, I would go straight money line Cincinnati Bengals as the underdog to, to win this game straight up and not by a lot, not necessarily blowing them out like they did with the Bills last week. But I just love Joe Burrow, the way he's playing, the way that team is playing on both sides of the ball. And this is more about how good the Bengals are playing right now than about the Chiefs. But when you have a banged up quarterback and, and that's so important, that is the biggest. There was a uh, there was an article earlier on in the year that we referenced about, you know, which singular players in the NFL move lines more and no player moves the line more than Patrick Mahomes. Sure, if he's right, banged right. up and hurt and he's not 100 uh, percent. That, that's a big deal to me against a team that I think was already a better complete team. So uh, unless the Chiefs can go out there and run the heck out of the ball and Mahomes is 100%, 
uh, it's it's Bengals all day for me. Me too. And I agree with a lot of what you said. And just to kind of rephrase it a little bit, Chris Jones scares the heck out of me if I'm the Bengals, but Burrow gets the ball out so quick and has a lot of matchups in his favor. I think if if Mahomes never even got hurt, I think I'm taking the Bengals in this game. And it seems like you kind of were leaning that way too. Yes, absolutely. And I felt that way last week. And, and mm-hmm. I, I think I nailed all four of our, our picks for the divisional games. And, and that was the easiest one for me. I thought that was the most obvious upset was – Bengals bills with the way those teams played in the second half of the year. And uh, I love what I'm seeing from the Bengals. And I think we might see the Bengals in the, in the Super Bowl once again. Uh, but this also sets up something else, which is sort of the superhuman Michael Jordan flu game scenario for Patrick Mahomes. Right. Too. I could add to the legacy. I think as far as what the national media would pick up and even, you know, Super Bowl week, that extra week, it goes beyond national media. It goes to, regular old morning shows that don't cover sports any day of the week, any day of the year, except for leading up to the Super Bowl. And I think as far as those storylines go, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, last pick in the draft, and, you know, flu game, Patrick Mahomes on an injured ankle, beating the Bengals, getting back to another one. He's the best player in the sport. Those are the storylines that I could absolutely see developing heading Mm -hmm. into the Super Bowl as well. But this Burrow legacy is growing at a avalanche pace as well. It is. And, and kind of like you said, I just think that the Bengals have far fewer weaknesses. Of the four teams, the Chiefs have the best player, but they also have the most weaknesses to me. And, and I also tweeted this out yesterday. Jamar Chase, he's played three games against the Chiefs. They're 3-0, and as everybody knows. Those three games, 24 catches, 417 yards, Four touchdowns. That's what Jamar Chase in his career has done against the the Chiefs, and they, their corners aren't as good as Higgins and Chase, you know. So he's averaging eight catches, one hundred and thirty yards, and touchdown, one point three touchdowns. 1. 3 touchdowns. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's averaging. That's averaging. Yeah. yeah, yeah, against a great team. That's pretty darn good. Yeah. That is pretty darn good. And by the way, they got some more weapons there on that Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. They're running the ball pretty well all of a sudden yeah. too. Uh, one more quick note here for everybody to chew on for the the Eagles 49ers game with the quarterbacks. It was a, it was a stat I wanted to bring up earlier. Um, Jalen Hurts needs to beat the 49ers to match Brock Purdy's career playoff win total. I'm throw that out there. Interesting. That adds up. I mean, Hurts yeah, was one and done last year. Right. Like we talk about battle tested. It's like he's a rookie and everything. Brock right. Purdy's only won two playoff games. Jalen Hurts is one and one in the playoffs in his career. He, he won his first playoff game against the Giants last week. He worked him completely outmatched. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, took me a little to win over, be won over by Hurts, but I am. I was wrong about him. I didn't think he was going to be an NFL starter. I was dead wrong. But one year ago, Boy, Hurts just got embarrassed by Todd Bowles and the Bucks. Is he ever going to be able to win a playoff game? Like, we act like he's been around the block for 10 years compared to Purdy. And, and you know, we're talking about storylines, too, with Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, because he's, to be honest with you, I think he's my league MVP, Jalen Hurts. And watching Car- Gardner Minshew operate mm-hmm. the Eagles solidified that for me, For where for a lot of voters, that probably took Hurts out of it because he got hurt. But yeah, I saw yeah. what it looked like without him. It was like, how valuable is this guy? We're talking value. Jalen Hurts, I think, might have been MVP of the league and, and having the you know the best record in the NFL and the one seed in the NFC for, for Jalen Hurts. And so this is not anything uh, putting down Jalen Hurts at all. He's a really fantastic sure. player. But talking about storylines, how about that? Because that could be one of the paths for the Eagles to win this game is it gets put on Hurts as a pocket passer. Let's say the 49ers are able to run the ball and get a lead and they're able to stop the run for the Eagles. So the Eagles become one-dimensional and have to throw. And, you know, the rush plan, like I mentioned, for the 49ers will be, you know, maybe spy him, maybe keep him in the pocket more. Can he just straight up deal from behind, from the pocket, and go lead the Eagles to victory? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be like the the feather in the, this guy has developed into this tier of quarterback in the NFL to do that in a championship game to go to the Super Bowl. I think he can, where I didn't used to think he can. Right. Um, he's a great deep passer, too. But let's see it. You know, I mean, again, if we're, we're building legacies here, you know, I mean, all four of these quarterbacks, as the case every year in the Final Four, have these are legacy builders. And, of course, he's the, the best QB sneaker now in the NFL, too. So it might come down to, you mm-hmm. know, fourth and one, fourth quarter, 
and he whatever his ungodly uh, amount of weight that he can squat that might yeah. come to play as <laughs> right. well to, to close that ball in the end zone. By the way, he's banged up as, as well. We have really I know no one even talks about that anymore about his shoulder. So will that affect his his ability to run? And uh, I don't know. I mean, these games are just both popcorn games and both so okay. tight. It's really hard to pick them. But I've got Niners Bengals. Yeah, I got Eagles Bengals, but any of the outcomes would not shock me one bit. Thanks, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen. Make sure you check out the team-specific podcasts for your favorite teams right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And, of course, Matt and I will be back Monday to break everything down from Championship Sunday, and we will know who the combatants will be in Super Bowl 57. Talk to you then right here, Peacock and Williamson.